<laughs> Thank you, Sheever. Funts fan here with Cinderin. Upper bracket T I stop looking at T I eleven secret versus P S G L G D. This is that's oh. my voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that distracted me a bit. Uh, we are in game though. This is gonna be. I mean, this is a hype matchup. Second seed Secret, unfortunately for them, have to face off against PSG LGD, who many feel are the favorites going into this tournament. But they ended up third in their group center. Yeah, they had a little bit of a slow start. I think LGD's day one was one of the weaker ones they've had in, in quite a while, but they, they picked up a lot of steam throughout the groups. And, that you know, that's kind of what you want. You want to go into the bracket with in, in top form. And I, I think there's a, a lot of good things to be said about how LGD have developed throughout this tournament. So very curious to see this. Like you said, uh, Secret definitely, is it fair to call them an underdog in this? You probably always call teams underdogs against LGD, right? Just historically speaking. Especially but you, yeah. <laughs> I always think LGD is going to win until they don't. But Well, you were telling me, uh, what, they've been top three at five TIs? Is that yeah. right? That is so, kind of insane. Obviously, different rosters for a lot of those, but regardless. Yeah, they've played every TI since TI2. Yeah. And they've got five top threes, but they've never won. I think they've got two or three second places. Um, out of those top threes, all right. Let's see, gonna see some fight. early action for the bounty. Zayat ends up netting himself that, but Resolution is going to take a little bit of damage here, which, of course, we are going to talk about Resolution a bit here, not just because he's awesome, Sinner, but he's playing a silencer, position three. Oh, I thought it was because he's playing your voice line. Okay. Uh, I did Let's... tell him to do that, and he's been a very good voice so far. <laughs> Thank you, Roman. <laughs> um... Yeah, sounds are off lane. Very unusual here from Secret. It is something that I think Puppy's teams historically have been really good at, or how to say, it, it's kind of hit or miss sometimes, but he's not afraid of doing uncharacteristic and creative approaches to, to laning stages to try to solve problems. I'm kind of with the panel, though, when they say, I don't think sounds are fair as well against Lone Dazzle. I think this is going to be a tough task for Resolution to do a lot with. He's playing with a, a support core in the Knicks who doesn't have the most laning impact compared to, say, something like a Marcy. Uh, so I think they might have their work cut out for them down here in lane. A little bit of a, a trade-off here between Nisha and nothing to say. And, uh, I just wanted to, to wrap up the thing we talked about with LGD's TI attendances, right? Because something that's funny about Secret as well is that they've placed like every position at TI, more or less, in the last six years. Uh, yeah. The only ones that have eluded this roster, I think, are actually second and first place. Last year they got third, the year before they got fourth, and I think they had a five, fifth, six, seven, eight. You know, they've more or less gone up one, one placement per year. So is this the year that Secret reaches the final? I mean, as you know, I did pick these two teams to end up in the finals, mm -hmm. uh, which Maybe a little awkward since they are facing off so early in the upper bracket, but that doesn't rule it out. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Secret, I think I've locked them in for second place. It's just how it's going to happen. Obviously, Puppy knows more than everybody. Uh, but yeah, PSG LGD, obviously very strong. But the groups, not as, I mean, they, they bled a little bit, Cinder. What, what do you think that is attributed to? Do you think they've been playing so much over the past, like all these tournaments coming up into TI, maybe a lot of research has been done against them? Uh... Or is a lot of it like Secret and teams like Liquid that have really gotten this ball rolling because of the last chance qualifier. Yeah, I think in part certain other teams have really raised their level in the last month and kind of caught up to an extent. But I also think aside from that, LGD have been very creative in their strategies. I think when you play this many different heroes and this many different strategies, some are going to miss. Unless you think back to something like Wings at TI6, where they were just so much better than a lot of other teams that they could run almost any heroes they wanted and just win on raw skill. Uh, the competitive field now is just so much closer, so I think if you do run a lot of different strategies, you're not going to hit it every single time. Uh, and also, like we said, kind of just a little bit of a slow start in day one, right? I think after day one, they more or less dropped I think, yep. one or two games in total. That's so. fair, that's fair. They just had to warm up a little bit, perhaps. And the mid lane right now, Nisha sitting on 15 and 1 CS. As you can see, a little action top lane, Faith Beyond taking the brunt of the damage here. Chrysalis still with the Starbreaker, will fully connect. And that looks like first blood goes the way of Secret in this game number one. This is just such a good carry against Enigma in lane. So, what generally does well. Oh, wait, this is gonna, I hope we're not going to hear this every time they get a kill. I listened to you enough already. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <about> that. <laughs> why did you have to make that one? <laughs> Um, I have to try to compete with Slack, you know? Yeah. I, good luck with that. Yeah. Um, oh, oh. Splitter up does connect from Nisha. Not. Nothing to say. In a bit of trouble. Gets off his shield crash, pops the fairy fire, will survive. But you can see the CS. I mean, it's pretty even overall. Would you say that this is kind of expected, uh, Lesh versus Pango? Yeah, I, I think it is 
ultimately slightly less rack favored because you have that range advantage and you're just going to spam out the harass. Uh, a lot of what this lane, what ends up happening this lane, I think, comes down to whether you can ensure that you get the four minute water rune on Tango. Uh, he might not even get the chance here. Nisha going back. Okay, that was a little bit too crazy. Um, but he's really trying to bully NTS out of lane here and ensure that he gets the water runes. If there is a rotation coming in now from Puppy, which I think there will be, who's, by the way, in classic Puppy style, jungling minute three on his Crystal Maiden. Yep. Uh, for value, obviously, uh, Dawnbreaker, one of the best carries in lane against Enigma, so doesn't need too much help. He can kill the Eidolons on his own with his two spells. And PSG LGD will be the ones to ensure both water runes, actually. A bit surprising that Puppy didn't come down here at all to try to help Nisha out, because I think now the mid lane is more or less going to equalize with the resources that um, Nothing to Say is going to have coming in now. There is still a bounty rune for Nisha to pick up right now as well, and it did cost them a little bit of rotation. I mean, they're rotating in to help him out, but... I mean, like you said, frostbiting those creeps in the jungle. Yummy, yummy for Mr. Puppy. Yep. To the Closing in on level three. Probably going to see him skill the Arcane Aura. I'm curious about his build. Uh, Puppy, I think, is one of the Crystal Maiden players historically that's been the happiest about maxing out Aura just to try to dominate the side lanes uh, by giving them that extra influx of mana. As there will be the level three point. Pretty standard to go 1-1-1. One, one, one. Um, it's going to be telling what he does from here on out, because I think there's also a lot of good things to be said about the, especially the Crystal Nova in this game. It's a good spell against the Lone Drade. It's a reliable, strong slow. Uh, it's good against the Tusk. You know, you want to slow them down so they can't stay on top of targets with Tank Team. Um, but maybe he still rates the aura higher. All right, going to see a little bit of a poke down here on bottom. Yeah, Poison Touch slowing resolution to a crawl. You can see Zayat is coming, but it's going to be too late. So first kill for PSG LGD so far in this game. I'm actually impressed with how much farm Rezo has here. I think having 21 and 7 here is pretty respectable given the leaning uh, that is true. matchup it, that he it has. It is the silencer off lane. <laughs> it so is silencer. Very mix. odd. It, it's very... I think odd is a good Die. word to describe it. Um, we'll return now here to the lane. I think... So I, I don't think silencer off lane is not viable and can't be run. Obviously, I mean, Secret are on something, right? They have an idea with this, but I do think Nyx is perhaps a little bit too much on the greedy side in terms of laning presence. Like, let's say you're playing with Clockwork or you're playing with Marcy or something. I think there's more potential to stand your ground and fight and, and hold the lane. Uh, but what's, what's Zayat's going to do for you? He has one Impale, and the Lone is just going to run on your silencer, and you have to yield every single time. But... The good news for Secret is the other two lanes are going great. They get there, obviously, the, the core Dawnbreaker, as expected, doing great against the Enigma in the top lane. Uh, and as we alluded to, Nisha still doing just fine in that mid. Both level six is now picked up in the mid lane. Wonder if we're going to see a potential rotation. I mean, both Crystal Maiden and Nyx have plays against Pango. You have the Frostbite, and you have the two stuns on Nyx to set up the Lash. With that level six, Pulse Nova could be a potential play. Uh, I don't know what the stats are now, but last I heard, uh, Crystal Maiden win rate was approaching 70% with actually a respectable amount of games played. Yep. But why do you think that is? Um, so I haven't looked too much in detail except oh, at which teams play it. 65.9. Um, that is a very high win rate. Um, I, I think part of it is what teams elect to pick it, right? I think Secret have been running it in multiple games, and they have a great win rate. Uh, so obviously that's going to inflate it a little bit. But I also just think CM in general has received some meaningful buffs lately. I think Crystal Nova is a very powerful spell when you get the right talents. Um, and maybe also a little bit about the pacing of the game, right? And teams maybe have a slightly better understanding of what to pair it with as well. You know, in the past, one of Maiden's problems has been getting run over in lane, but you put it with Dawnbreaker carry. <laughs> You know, you're True. probably not too worried about being beaten in lane. Then you go and transition, and something that your hero can do that a lot of fives can't is actually you you scale incredibly well with few items, right? If you get a BKB on this hero, if you get some sort of utility... Nice bullets. snowball. Ends up getting out of the range of the Starbreaker, but it matters not because Puppy is here to play as well. So one kill for Secret as... Why? Approach the Tier 1 tower will be fine. Resolution in the meantime. It's going to lose... Nothing to say, actually died to Zayats. Yep, so that was wow. that mid-rotation coming in from the Nyx and getting full value out of the 2-0-2 build. Uh, very standard for Nyx to not get Mana Burn until later in the game. And what you do offer then is that if you connect that first stun on Pango, he can't really reset, right? You just stand in his path and, oh well, he can try to... He needs to be a little bit careful about how he jumps with Thrush Buckle, essentially, and you can maybe catch him with Carapace as he does that to hit the Creep Wave. Use that as a setup for a secondary stun and then Leshrac with the third stun. <laughs> Oh, but Snowball in onto the mid lane. Nisha already at half HP. And here comes nothing to say with the Rolling Thunder, but a big Solar Guardian coming in as well as Chrysalis trying to focus down Jin Q. They'll be successful eventually. And nothing to say has to roll away. So rotations from both sides ends up netting Secret the 
kill on the tusk. This is something Secret's lineup has in spades, actually. They don't necessarily have the best setup. You only really have the Nyx that's going to initiate moves, but you have so much counter engage. You have the Donald, you have Global Silence, you have Spike Carapace. If the enemy team is the one making a move on you and you have your spells ready, it is, you got to be very wary as LGD about how you initiate moves. And yeah, that was a nice punish there. It will, at the very least for LGD, it will give Faith beyond level six and a little bit of space in that top lane. He's happy to finally have a little bit of space away from this dawn. Yeah, secret but. find Ame. Zayats gets off the impale, but see the ult coming out from the lone druid as Nisha is here with the pulse. Nova Y gets up a nice poison touch. Nice blocks coming out from Zayat, but the grave comes out as well. It's nothing to say is coming to try to help out his comrade, but oh, he actually does TP out just barely enough HP, and Nisha and company have to high tail away, but Nisha oh, gets blocked shard. in by the ice shards. Split Earth only hits on one. You can see Resolution trying to help him out. He actually dodges the swashbuckle as Jin Q will be on the fall. And now they're going to turn this around to nothing to say as well. So it ends up being a two for one as Secret looked like they were going to lose out on that engagement, but a nice turnaround and a great voice line from Resolution. Perfect timing. <laughs> I love that movement from Nisha in that moment, by the way. It's it's one of those situations where Pango has an expectation of, okay, Lesh is going to retreat in this angle. Nisha just ran into them, and he yeah. took some of the swashbuckle damage, but Pango couldn't connect afterwards because he jumped across to the other side, expecting Nisha to be running away. And that means they don't have that damage in the tank to finish him Radiant's off, and he will in turn just kill off, I believe it was the Tusk, and then, you know, Pango p finds himself in a very compromised position as well afterwards. Worth noting, by the way, Resolution is not going global yet. He's level seven. He's okay. four one two build. So I thought we were going to see the global silence mm -hmm. as a as a solution to some of this aggressive movement that LGD can make, but doesn't consider it worth it just yet. Yeah, very interesting. As the runes have been uh, kind of eluding Mr. Nisha for quite a while, he's guessed bottom like three times in a row and has not been there. But still, both. Him and Chrysalis are top net worth at the moment for the entire game. But overall, the game feel like, in terms of the actual, like, the feel of the game right now, who do you think this favors? Because we have Faith Beyond getting quite a bit of farm now into that triangle. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of hard to say. I feel like a lot of the time when Secret gets to these super late game situations with Dawnbreaker, it falls a little bit flat a lot of the time when they play it as carry. It has its limitations. The level 25 talent, though, is amazing, but you need to get there and get the two Starbreaker chargers. Um, with that said, though, they have come off to a pretty good mid-game situation now, where because Enigma's... Ayat's impale into the Solar Guardian. Ame gets off his ult again. Very tanky boy. Not even remotely close to being enough damage when he gets the true form off. And it might cost Crystal this. Yeah, the, the snowball. snowball is going to connect. You can see... The Lone Druid Bear going pretty ham here, but Puppy's there with the slow. And the hammer coming in now into Jin Q with the help of Resolution. So again, Secret getting the better of this engagement despite being the ones falling back initially in this fight. That was a good time to find that skill up point into Global Silence, preventing the Shallow Grave uh, from coming in with a potential save there onto Jin Q. And yeah, good, good movements from Secret so far. I think they're doing a really, really good job at connecting heroes. And wow, would you have a look at the CS right now? Nisha, 10 CS per minute. Ooh, he's got 114 to the only 58 of Pango. So again, the big winner on LGD and all of this is Faith Beyond, who gets the space, but he has a lot of ground to cover. If Secret can keep up this pace, and we're looking at a potential kind of formidable mid game where, yeah, you have this Enigma, you have this team fight, but you know you need to work around Global Silence, you know you need to work around Spike Carapace, and even Solar Guardian. So until you get BKB on Enigma, I feel like Black Hole is kind of a pipe dream. You're not really likely to get off. They will get the top tower, though. Rotation now from Ami will connect on the Lone Druid. Get that last hit for his Enigma. Yeah, Raid Pact maybe is a time for them to try to do something. I think they're just probably in the conceding this tower. Nisha has a haste rune. Nice yeah, D-Ward there. D-Ward as well. And Nisha, let's see if he waits around for that Diabolic Edict cooldown, but you can see nothing to say in Jin-Q in the area. Um, do you want to talk about the Roche potential from each side? Because I feel like PSG LGD, they have, they have really good Roche fighting mm -hmm. in that area, and Secret, not nearly Radiant's as much. Middle tower is under attack. Yeah, that's fair. And not not just the fighting, also killing Roche himself, right? Yeah, Secret's true. lineup does a pretty poor job at killing Roche. They don't have meaningful physical damage, except Dawn, who is rushing a death, so which will you know, okay. help. But it's going to be a while before Secret likely do that unless they win a, a big team fight beforehand because LGD can relatively easily go and pick the test the area. Um, Haste. Oh, yeah, nothing to say. He gets stunned right out of the gates. They don't even need the Solar Guardian. There's Nisha and that's the kill with the Split Earth. 4k lead for Secret now. Uh -huh. They are absolutely destroying Darn it. Darn to run away with it as we see 
Puppy's ult come out after the Frostbite, and Zayats is here with another Impale Starbreaker to finish off Jin Q. You were late on the grave there from Y. Kind of uncommon that he doesn't get that off in time. Yeah, Secret are crushing them right now. Just move after move. That's something that this Radiant lineup struggles with. If Pango is not having a good game, there are ways of initiation. What do you have? You have the Tusk who can maybe set it up. He just reached level 6. Uh, the supports of LGD have been massively under-leveled this game. You're finding both of them finding their sixes at like 13 minutes. Compare that to Secrets, right? Zayat is now level 8, Puppy's level 7 and a bit. So way ahead from these early successful moves. Uh, and I think it's just too integral for, uh, for LGD's lineup that Jin Q was, was able to do some of these rotations correctly. And it just hasn't been the case. He's 1 and 5, hasn't really connected much. Has, has the best, had the best pairings, so... Good for C Secret, just keep building on this lead as they will be getting more and more map control. And again, you you got to pick your fights very wisely as LGD in this game. It's uh, the amount of counter initiation makes it very, very difficult to to really pick your... It's kind of like pick your poison, right? You're not going to get a free fight at any point, I think. It's... Yeah, definitely not at this pace. you need to farm. It's, um, it's tricky. No, nothing to say, still working on his Diffusal Blade. And you talked about Chrysalis. Just about to finish his death, so just needs uh, the last component with the Blightstone. And Nisha, how fast? Oh, he already has Bloodstone. <laughs> okay, that was pretty fast. Yep. All right, very he good. Very, very farmed. And he's obviously this nice, aggressive ward that uh, Secret have on the inside the enemy jungle is going to allow Nisha to play very aggressively down here. It's pretty, pretty standard for Dyer to do this when they do get the bottom tier one tower, is to start occupying this area. And, Leshrac is just such an amazing hero for this. He's a difficult kill. He has the counter initiation. He has the counter initiations that we've talked about, and he can almost solo this tower in two rounds of edict. So he is going to force rotation from PSG LGD to come down here, and they really don't want to play on the defense, right? Like, LGD's lineup is kind of crafted to hit a timing right now and go and force your towers. So if you're the one setting the agenda, oh, you're already Bobby. really happy. Looking to tank the gank. Oh, the Global Science is giving him some cover, and the Solar Guardian coming in as well. Jin Q is just punished right off the bat. Beautiful play from Secret, as they just shut that smoke gank down immediately. And Zayat's looking for more. Oh, this could be big. They don't have. They don't have a Solar Guardian, Guardian though. Yeah. Drop hey. everything. Still trying. Gets off the Vendetta first. Actually gets the Impale as well. Crystal is here with the huge Starbreaker, and down goes Ame. And Secret starting to really run away with this. You're gonna have to have a word with Resolution after this game. This is getting out of here. I'm gonna have to give him some more money, I think. Yeah, he's doing a great job. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Resolution, he has the Falcon Blade into four staff. He's gonna see a Starbreaker again come out. Faith Beyond caught out. His own side here. Zayat stuck inside the Ice Shards. Nothing to say. He's gonna be blocked off by said Ice Shards. And the four staff that we just talked about from Resolution coming into play already. 7k lead for Secret. Things are looking very good for them. And again, I, I mean, if you have a big enough lead, then taking Roche isn't that hard considering, like, you just get a pick off or two and then you can just take it. But I feel like that is the best opportunity for LG to get back into this game. Yeah, I think ideally what they want to do is once Global Sounds and the Donald have come out, you want to smoke and make your own move, right? Because that's True. one moment in time where you can initiate something without the fear of just getting immediately globally countered. But they're not managing to do that right now. They're still, they have about 30 seconds to go if they did want to make a rotation, but Secret are very firmly planted in the bottom half of the map while LGD are in the top, so they're not going to find anything. And that just means that come minute 18, Secret are just ready to rock and roll again. And it's hard to see the path for LGD to initiate fights. So maybe you just need to, again, slow things down, farm it up. But what's the exact timing you're playing for? So your Lone Druid has Maelstrom and he's going towards the Mjolnir. Your Enigma is not going BKB because he's going to be scared about Global the whole game and maybe he will just never get to use Black Hole, more or less. Uh, so he's going for the Greaves. All right, they're going to try oh. to turn this into Roche. I kind of like this. I think maybe if they did this a little bit earlier, this would have been a higher impact play because actually the Global and the Donald are now online again. So might have missed the timing if Secret find this opportunity to get in there with Zayats. Yep, Roche going about down it. slowly. 
Wraith packed inside as Nisha seems to have a decent oh. idea that this is happening. He's just going to walk right in with the Splitter Art. Gets off the Pulse Nova and the Bloodstone ahead of him. The Solar Guardian on the outskirts as Zayas gets stunned, but nothing to say. Already gets off his Rolling Thunder, but a huge Starbreaker, Chrysalis, deletes Faith Beyond. Jin Q quite, starting to get quite low as Puppy is the first to fall for Seeker, so it's a one for one. He's going to buy back into the game, though. Double kill from Crystal is coming out as well, and Nisha pretty much out of mana, but it's just enough to take out Ame. And now Y and company from LGD have to get the hell out of here as Seeker will likely get the Roche. Yeah, maybe, maybe Secret kind of let them do that. Thanks like, for the damage. Do, do the hard work for us. You know, we can't really kill Roche ourselves that quickly. So if you guys would please get him to a quarter health, we'll just show up with our spells and clean you out. They, they didn't even use global. Like, Rezo actually doesn't have the mana free right now. It was not necessary in that yeah. fight. They had a Donald, which was okay to connect on the side. We're going to see the replay here. So I love the way Secret approached this fight by sending in Leshrac first. He knows he has so much defensive cover plus the Bloodstone that he's not worried and they find this connection on the left-hand side. This pretty much ends the fight. They kill off the Enigma uh, with the Nyx as well as the Dawnbreaker ult, connect that, and Ame. Sure, you find the Crystal Maiden in the middle of that fight, but you're in the middle of the fight against Lesh, and you're not getting out of there afterwards, so easy cleanup for Secret, and man, going into the series today, I was not expecting that any game would be this one-sided as this is looking right now. Um, are, are LGD adopting some sort of new strategy? You know, start out slow in groups, <laughs> then you pick up some steam. You go into the playoffs, you start off slow in game number one, you pick up your steam. That's yeah, maybe the question, because this mean, one is it's not looking healthy right now. So if I'm not mistaken, at the Arlington Major, I was casting a game of PSG LGD were down by like 20 plus K at the, like it was a, a top hat shellacking level. And they brought it back. So this is the one team I would not be comfortable with a lead, no matter how much. As we see mass TPs now from PSG LGD. Global signs to give him some cover. Nisha really wants to finish off the dads, but not going to be able to do so. Now completely out of mana. But remember, does have the Aegis still intact. Might have to use it here, but Solar Guardian is healing up to a decent amount. Crystalis not able to connect on any stuns, though. As Secret looking to potentially reset, but no kills come out from PSG LGD. Kill see the, the freezing field in the meantime, yeah. Is that bear number one or is that two? Uh, I think that is bear number two. Yeah. Oh, 50 wow. second cooldown now for Okay. Um, yeah, if somebody has experience killing creeps with uh, freezing field, it is puppy. So <laughs> feels really good about that. Uh, that's a, a very big creep there. A so-called creep hero, if you will. That's very... If you're new to Dota, um, Lone Druid is bear has, is complicated. It's... Um, yeah. That's true. That's its, its Facebook status. It's complicated. <laughs> All right. Nice carapace. Oh, beautiful setup. Splitter up to follow. And the Impale, again, nothing to say is dead. And that's secret. Man. You got to be so careful about this as Pango. You kind of need to weigh the pros and cons of using Swashbuckle like this. Because you could obviously Swashbuckle toward your own base with the damage, right? But he wanted to get a little bit of value poke out of it. Gets carapace and gets killed. So... You gotta second guess yourself a lot of the time with your pango instincts when you are playing against this hero and it's missing because you never know when you're gonna connect on that carapace and you're just getting I'm killed off by that. Just kill we can, uh, we can smoke. We can kill I can smoke mango. We mango. don't have. Mango. Mango. Oh, actually. Yeah, uh, I will swap. Not mango. global, but we can try it easy. Let's try it in 15 seconds, though. Oh, yeah, the classic wrestler, no global, we can fight easy. Well, he didn't have mana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Impale set up onto Faith Beyond with the Solar Guardian, but a nice Tusk Snowball mitigates a lot of it as Crystal's pops the BKB a little bit prematurely. Starbreak doesn't really connect very well, but they still have the damage, it looks like, to take out Faith Beyond. And Jin Q is next on the list. So despite the secret initiation not going as planned, I mean, with this kind of a lead, it doesn't really matter sometimes. It's just such a strong position for their lineup to play on this high ground, right? And you're seeing again Faith Beyond. He's just holding Black Hole. He Radiant can't use it. So the impact of this hero, very, very minimal so far in this game. Considering what we've seen from Enigma earlier in the tournament, Secret seems to have a very good understanding of how to solve it. And this looks like Y will also finding a quick way back to base. As Grave. Yeah. Okay. Does. He kind of juked them by running in a line. Sometimes it's the, uh, uh, the okay. hardest path to follow. Okay. <laughs> It's really impressive that he found a way out of that. On the other side of the map, though, Jin Q gets off the initiation. Already has his shard as Zayats gets off the impale as Nisha has to walk his way around. But it looks like Jin Q is likely to fall. He's getting healed up, though. And still the Aegis in line for Nisha, so he is not scared. Eventually, Jin Q goes down, and there's the stun follow up. And Nisha, they're looking for the bear. That's all the damage that Ame has. 
I mean, to get Lightning not, Storm down, he's just going to continue on now. They're looking for a full team wide, potentially. Global Silence is there. Nisha just hedging his bets. GG uh, is called. Over. And Secret completely stomped game number one. Not what we were expecting, but Secret off to an amazing start. Yeah, that was, that was not even remotely close. Just absolutely crushed them start to finish. The lanes went well. Uh, I think the double counter to the Enigma really caused a lot of problems for LGD. I mean, it's easy to say, right, because he never cast Black Hole. It's pretty rare that you see a game with Enigma not using ulti a single time. Yeah. True. But you got to look at it from his perspective. He's playing into some super hard counters. They let the silencer through to second phase. Uh, Secret more than happy to pick that up and just put on a clinic in this game. Everything went exceptionally well. Nisha got the fast bloodstone like you talked about. He gets the Aegis and they just get the job done. Like, he runs in. What's killing him? They have no healing reduction. He puts on the bloodstone. Goes to town, hits a lot of units with Pulse Nova, and just kills them out of everything. So LGD kind of, I mean, I was going to say on the ropes. Technically on the ropes would be lower bracket. They obviously would still have another life. If right. <laughs> Thank you, and welcome to game number two between Secret and PSG LGD. Uh, happy Slacks, how are you doing? Am I happy Slacks? I can't tell. I think you're, you're, you're angry slacks and I'm LGD after the last game. So uh, I, think, uh, I think, you know, we're, uh, we're doing okay up here. Let's see if, uh, if LGD are doing better in this game than the previous one because that was an absolute beatdown and they need to bring it back here to get us a third game. I uh, just want to give a quick shout out to the fans in the arena that supplied us with these. We have some fans here with a seemingly endless supply of Sir Action Slacks masks. I'm sure you guys will be able to find them out there, but now it's time for the game. Yep. That was a good timing on that voice line of us actually taking off the mask, so that's very, that did feel good to take off, I'm not gonna lie. So. It is close to Halloween, and I did feel terrifying for once in my life. That so is true. Appreciate that. Uh, as we do make it into game number two, like we said, and already a smoke here from LGD, but looking at their lineup, Cinderin, I might have to interrupt you uh, if things start, but you can start your monologue to tell me what you think of both sides here. I, I think compared to last game, I think LGD have more early game prowess. I, I think last game was a very, in a way, it was a little bit all in with how things needed to go. And the one lane that they were going to do well in kind of did, but not enough. I think this time around they have more skirmishing power with the Monkey King stun from the trees. They've got a tiny on GQ this time compared to the Tusk last game that got shot down. Um, for Secret, they, they're running some of the same stuff, right? The name of the game last game was Counter Initiation. This time around they have it again. They have their Nyx Dawnbreaker combo where you you stun to set up the Dawnbreaker ult, you can Carapace to set it up. Um, rather different though from Puppy's side to have the Disruptor instead of the Maiden. A very aggressive support that capitalizes a lot on when you initiate. Yeah. Uh, so I guess in a way Secret's lineup a little bit less one-dimensional than last game, which can be both a good and a bad thing. Um, LTP. But more than anything, I, I don't know how much to really talk about the drafts more so than, okay, you know, for LGD, you've got to feel like you get an entry into the game, right? Whatever lineup you have. If you fall behind again, it's not a good look. Yep, as we're going to see an Impale come out from Zayas just to poke Y a bit. Uh, but like you said, the CM, very different with the Disruptor now because, I mean, we saw early game, Puppy was farming, and guess what? Disruptor cannot do that at all. Yeah. Uh, he can farm heroes, though, if he's able to find pickoffs here. Just forcing Y back uh, to the tier 2 tower. Zion's TP's away now. So he's preventing the supports from getting into the lane with their position 1. Uh, yeah. Faithbeon playing the Death Prophet here. Interesting choice from Secret here to opt for a essentially a lane, a lane swap, right? They're playing Chrysalis in the off lane together with Disruptor on Puppy. So they feel like this matchup, both their side lane matchups are not particularly good against Monkey King, right? Both Marcy and Dawn are these melee heroes. Uh, but they feel like they offer more in the top lane this way. And I think part of the logic is this way they combine all of their magic damage better, right? Disruptor plus Dawn have a lot of magic damage against the Frost Shield uh, and against Monkey King's low HP pool. So maybe they can stand their ground and fight back, whereas something like a Nyx Marcy, I think, would have kind of been overwhelmed. Sure, they have some magic damage, but it doesn't amount to nearly the same as uh, as a good Celestial oh, Hammer plus Thunderstrike combination will. So, well, I mean, see. as a result of these lanes, Rezo is effectively playing position one Marcy, which, yep. you know, he's had plenty of practice in years past playing position one, position two, and obviously position three normally now these days. Uh, but what are your thoughts on Marcy as a POS one right now? I think the hero is incredibly strong as a core in general. You need BKB phase boots and you become a monster. So whichever lane you put Marcy in where she finds farm, you will get that impact later. Uh, I do think one upside for LGD against this hero in this game, though, is that I think they have somewhat decent disengage. They have some tossbacks, they have frost shield against the Marcy damage. 
Uh, Monkey King has his jump. Obviously, they have the arguably the advantage of vision as well, where they have Zeus ulti, they can have Monkey in the trees. There's a Nyx on the other side, so maybe kind of equalizes it, but um, I definitely think this is a, a game where Marcy with a BKB is very strong, but until she has it, I think she can be taken advantage of by almost all of LGD's lineup, actually. A lot of magic burst, a lot of control. And what are your thoughts on this specific mid matchup, Lesh versus Zeus? Uh, should be Lesh favored. It's kind, it's kind of like last game where you had Nisha playing against a Pangolier. Uh, this time you're against a ranged hero, but Zeus's forte is not beating ranged heroes out of lane. It's finding his farm and then finding impact later uh, and just kind of trying to break even. But I do think Lesh over time should be able to build a little bit of an advantage. Nice detail there from Nothing to Say in mid, by the way. Used the uh, the heavenly jump to attack speed slow Nisha so he didn't get the Black Bear creep. Just a double CS loss, essentially. Rezo getting forced out of lane temporarily here. Uh, eight and six start for him, so yeah, not the best. Not the best, but we'll see if that changes here. Jin Q has been applying a lot of pressure. Obviously, Faith Beyond on the death prep, like we talked about. A hero that, uh, I mean, not too long ago was changed. So Spirit Siphon is not percentage based damage, so it won't scale as well, but as a result, it's. And a lot of times, stronger early game. It is a fixed amount. So powerful around the. I think, in many ways, DP is one of the strongest heroes in Dota when it hits level seven. If it has four in Spirit Siphon and has an okay matchup, you see these clips where DPs just win one v threes because the enemy team doesn't have healing reduction or don't have good chain stuns or kite ability to get away. Um, a hero like Marcy is relatively safe in that regard, that she does have the rebound to get away, but you still got to be a little bit wary when Q hits level 3, because you could get tossed too far away to rebound, and then you can get avalanched in that in that yeah. position. But Rezo, set up there from Zayas to start things out. Sidekick is there as well, but the Spirit Siphon from Faith Beyond is going to force Resolution Radiant back for the time being and connect back into the lane. But you can see the CS from all the lanes. This is very LGD favored. Mid lane is kind of a wash, but the other two very uh, LGD favored, like I said. So how important is that for Secret, uh, or sorry, for LGD to get off to this good start in the laning stage? I mean, it's huge, especially, I think that one of the biggest differences between this game and the last is just polar opposite game for Crystalis, right? Last game, he got to play Dawnbreaker against Enigma, which is just, you're just coasting to a free lane. Yeah. This one, you have one of your worst matchups, which, Again, kind of interesting that Secret opt for this, right? I think not only did they put Dawnbreaker against Monkey King, didn't they also pick it into Monkey? Or what was the pick order? I feel like it was kind of... There was something about that draft that was a little bit surprising with the order. Um, oh, what would have been so bad about Marcy in this thing? Because she has a way to get away from... She does uh, have a way to get away as well. Yeah. Oh, glimpse back, Starbreaker, but a lot of it's mitigated thanks to the Frost Shield coming out from Y. Not gonna, oh, I was going to say, it's not going to lead to kill, but that is more damage than I thought. First Blood ends up going to Puppy. Yeah. So Secret, despite losing in the CS and the outer lanes, able to get First Blood. A nice double stun from Zayas, but the Avalanche is going to keep him in place. Spirit Siphon, and the Tree Toss is there. Jin Q gets credit for it. Yeah, I, I think the mindset for Secret in this bottom lane should just be we can't kill and we shouldn't go for aggressive moves because I think the punish is just too strong, right? Even Rezo with a running sidekick on both of them, Faith Beyond is going to overpower them with Spirit Siphon. They just don't have the tools to, to manage that until you have maybe level 6 on Marcy. Perhaps there's an opportunity to find a kill there. But yeah, the top lane, nice kill from Secret. I'm a little bit surprised that Ame didn't get more involved in trying to save his Lich, but I think he had creeps in the tower that he was prioritizing, and maybe the communication was, Y saying, I'm fine, don't worry. Um, I'm Speaking of case. Y, yep. take some heavy damage here, but here comes the pounce from Ame. Chrysalis, it's going to be another Jingu stack coming out for Ame. Puppy basically out of oh, mana right now. Stuns. Yeah, but the Starbreaker coming out. It does connect onto the Lich, but the Thunder God's Wrath finishes off two heroes. So nothing to say, despite being kind of a wash in the mid lane, now has two kills to his name. Yeah, and that's going to put him at the advantage, not just breaking even now with Lesh, but will be pulling ahead on that network. So 500 gold advantage for him there. Had the Arcane Rune as well for that Thunder God. Oh, so it wow. feels really good to use. It's a it's a relatively long cooldown on level one, but yeah, Ooh. nice jump there. No <laughs> Carapace. Yeah. From Zayats. Was, maybe wasn't expecting the jump to come that early from yeah. MTS, but... Yeah, I, I dare say already that the conditions LGD have in this game are going to make it a closer game than the last one. Like, this is already so much better when you consider how their lineup is going to fare in the in the next stages of this game. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and I think the challenge here for Secret is going to be bringing Nisha into the game. I think he's the key to unlocking the game for them. He has a lot of magic damage against the Frost Shield. He's one of the heroes that can kill Monkey King right now, which, as we've established, their two side lane melee cores don't do the best job at. Uh, but the way you bring the Lesh into the game here is usually through the Nyx, but he's level 2. We're 7 minutes wow. in. Zayats is having a totally different game than the first one. Uh, really suffering down here. They're obviously going to use that to give Rezo the priority of finding a fast 6, and now he's going to leech some XP off of Nisha climbing that stack in the jungle, but it's a long ways away. I think Zayats has to take a lane away now uh, from Nisha for a while to give himself a game. It is really important that you don't fall into that trap of supports, which I think kind of happened to LG in the last game, where you're like, you know, you can't just give your cores everything. The supports need to be unlocked to find purpose in the game. But now Zayats is back bottom. Rezo trying to farm these creeps up, but Avalanche is there. Toss back into the Exorcism from Faith Beyond, but the rebound <laughs> global that. range as usual. And Marcy so is, <laughs> is a okay to say the least. Uh, no Sinister Gaze there, I believe, from Y. That is true. I think that he wanted to use it a little bit later. Didn't expect Marcy to be in range for the jump on the Nyx there. So I think it is one of those moments where you need to time it perfectly, because if you use it instantly, I don't think you have enough damage for Rezo anyway, so you needed to use it delayed. Secret are trying to fight into this X, so it's going to be running out relatively soon, so I'm trying to time that perfectly. Rezo's going to show himself, though. His fortification was already popped as Jin Q. Oh. They do get the D word one way or the other, but it will be a deny. As you can see, oh, nothing to say, taking a lot of damage, actually, the heavenly jump on the other side, and he's just dead to Nisha. Big kill for Seeker, as now they try to pursue. That was whoa, a rebound whoa, into what? a toss, which helps the unleash a little bit here. Impale's going to connect on to one, but now Resolution has to be a little bit careful. Gets off the dispose, and there's the Sinister Gaze you were talking about from Y. They do find the kill on the support, but Resolution falls in the end. Oh. And a split earth just a millimeter off. And Nisha trying to oh, find some more value you said here. Millimeter, not inch. All right, Zinkus. Well, it was a millimeter. Inch is bigger than a millimeter. I don't know if you know that, Cinderin. Oh, you don't well, know what a millimeter is. Trivia time for you as Crystalis. <laughs> Hammers to the low ground, looks like he's fine. Yeah. That was a sick toss from ZQ, by the way, during... I think it was mid... Mid air. It was mid rebound, so he didn't get stunned, and actually made a pretty big difference there that he finds that toss uh, to salvage that situation somewhat. But yeah, huge play from Nisha there, the rotation, finding the Zeus solo kill, finding the regen rune, and converting that into additional kill with bot has essentially equalized the game now and put himself in the driver's seat, which... You know, if you're a Secret fan, you might not find this net worth split too healthy. Uh, the Lesh way at the top of the board, but then you got to look quite far down to find the next hero for the team you're cheering for. But if you do have one hero far away of the field in this game... Oh, you we have the guy. Impale. Nice setup from Resolution as well. Crystal with a Solar Guardian. Faith Beyond is deleted. Big kill. Nice pick off, and they've obviously practiced this combo a lot. <laughs> yep. I mean, last game they didn't have the Marcy to help out on top of that initiation. It was just the Nyx, but it still proved to be quite potent. Now Nisha and company look to find Jin Q, but the Avalanche nicely placed from him. Spike yep. Carapace a little bit too late. Yeah, to, to quote a, a wise philosopher, it, it really does feel so good to, to play with, with multiple setup stuns as Dawn. Thank you. Sir. And, uh, yeah. I will never call you that again, trust. <laughs> All right. Zayat. He's going to be spotted. Okay. Sinister Gaze is there. Resolution gets a nice stun off with his rebound. Looks like Y is mega dead. It's Faith Beyond coming from the low ground with that exorcism. Jin Q following out behind with a static storm inside that kinetic field. They're going to try to focus down the DP, but she's healing so much. Now Resolution, he is getting low. The earn charge applied. One last little damage proc there from the exorcism, and Faith Beyond gets credit for that. The urn as well will now be turned into a vessel. So this time around, LGD with the healing reduction. I think to say he's going to do a nice job of dodging, but it doesn't matter. Chrysalis still has the damage. Boundless Strike connects on the two as Ame has come to play. But there is the glimpse, and that's going to reset things. So despite losing there, I mean, what do you want to even call it, Marcy? It is the position three, technically. Yeah. They do get the, the position two Zeus. I mean, at this point, both Marcy and Dawn are kind of position Three and a half. <laughs> when you True. Look at the net worth. So. I mean, we've seen a lot of games in the past where Secret kind of rely on Nisha to absolutely take over, and I want to say of all the people that is good at carrying on their back, he is probably number one on my list if I had to make one. As Zayats. Oh, oh nice the horsey. horsey. Very good. Yep. But Ame is there. That's a longer horsey. Yeah, that's Primal a monkey. Spring. Monkey over horse apparently. And Zayats will proc down. That was almost the name of your two cats. That's right. Thank you, Simba. You're welcome. One percent of the audience got that. That's fine. 
you're really, really great to work with. What, what is it your cats are called? It's Monkey. Bucket. <laughs> bucket. It's Bucket, right? That's right. Another bucket one. and Pookie. Thank what, you. What name's their cat Bucket? Uh, All right, uh, never mind. Don't talk about my dog's name, okay? We're good. Onion. Yeah, that's not what his name is. It basically is. As Nisha makes his way to the top lane with Resolution's help, and then looking to get the trade a little bit late here, but I doubt LGD will try to defend just yeah. using the fortification. Uh, Bloodstone, not too far away from Nisha, just the recipe away, I believe. Yeah, the big difference between this game and the last one is they have the vessel, right? So there is a path to killing Lesh uh, for Faith Beyond here on the deep team. Uh, and they also have more burst in general. Last game they had more like sustained damage with the Lone Druid, etc. But this time you have the Zeus, you have Monkey King with some decent burst. DP with the high damage at this point in time. Yeah, but this mid tier one, yep. kind of a big deal. You got to be careful of that Thunderbolt if you're Zyats for that vision. Sentry there as well. They're going to spot him. They're going to try to burst him down. Thunder God's Wrath is there as well. Looks like Puppy's going to survive his Solar Guardian coming in now. They're going to focus all their efforts onto this Lich, and the Zeus dies as well. So nothing to say takes a fall. This is going to be a oh. third kill in this engagement, all for Secret and even a buyback coming out. They set that up so well. The Nyx does not get caught running into the Sentry, eats the DP silence, resets, and just goes back in. And again, I think in this game, nothing to say with the the three deaths on Zeus is just getting caught a bit too much. Secret with a big trade there. Sure, you lose your mid tower, but you take one right back, you find three kills and a buyback out of the Lich. So that's huge, and LGD... And I will say, this time around, Secret's Roche lineup is far better in terms of just taking it. Yeah, uh, Marcy is with, very good at it. Yeah, Marcy on top of... I mean, we saw the Diabol... I mean, the same combo, I guess, from last time, but either way something they can actually not have to rely on LGD to do three-fourths of the damage before taking, yeah. if they you want. Just, you put the sidekick on a Dawnbreaker with Deso, and then you use your ult, and those two heroes together can probably kill Roche in like 20 seconds, just yeah. the two of them, so... Definitely yeah, spotting much Spotting some things out here. As we have Limps. a glimpse, Faith Beyond is out of there. Hastrun does spawn as Puppy's gonna take the brunt here. Boundless Strike, but he turns into a little pig. A couple more right clicks will do it. So support down for secret. As LGD looking for more. It's all five LGD heroes killing a five disruptor though. That does not feel that great. And this is one of the strengths that you have as secret's lineup is that you can play this Dawnbreaker in a side lane and push out the waves and feel somewhat safe and obviously connect with your ult when it's available. On the other side, Marcy, also a, a kind of tricky hero for LGD's heroes to kill, so you need to rotate the right amount of numbers. They will do a big move here once again. This time as four, though. Trying to not break the smoke onto the Nyx. This would be a huge pick if they found Nisha, but reading this like a book and not getting caught. Getting away with that ward. He might be the one that suffers, but again, it's going to be a support. Potentially, he gets off this by Carapace, though. Exorcism is popped. Does that mean they want to try to go for a Roach? They're trying to take a fight. Faith Beyond. Finding Chrysalis, slowing him down with the Spirit Slower. Siphon, but the Kinetic Field blocks him off. And that might be all PSG LGD get, and that's a big cooldown that they have to take into account now. Oh, they might even lose their Tiny, into the too. Split Earth. Hammer's there as well. Down goes Tiny. Faith Beyond, he's here as well, but the Exorcism is running out. Resolution forced to fight despite the Spirit being applied to him. Oh Chrysalis, my god. Big Lich ult onto two, and PSG LGD, despite being down in numbers at the start, end up taking this fight in space, three for one, and Nisha left along with Zayats here in the top lane. Oh, they got insane value out of DP in that fight. So much damage, so much healing, and like you said, the chain cross doing tons of work as well. And it honestly, that looked like a really good counterplay from Secret jumping on the Tiny, but I think Resolution maybe bit over a little bit more than he could chew there. I think they have the kill without the rebound. He doesn't need to go in. And that did set just them up for a sentry there. He's going to get the toss off, and that means Secret probably will back out here. Another ward. <laughs> the ward battles have come in. Yep. Looks like Secret to get a bit of that engagement. It's nothing to say now with the arcane rune. That's a big one. So we're going to see. replay here. Yeah. I thought this fight was. So this is, this is really good, this glimpse that comes out here. So they're going to glimpse back Jin Q into a Lesh stun. And I think this is a kill without Marcy con connecting here. And now Reso is out of position. Chain Cross starts bouncing. He carries that one. Wait, didn't it continue? Oh, it's right here. It was on the creep camp above. I was like, where did it go? And oh. then it connected back down to Puppy and Crystal. All right, that's oh. just flat out really unfortunate because it looked like they carried it away and it was yeah. gone. I think Secret were caught off guard by that Chain Cross returning to the fight and actually just giving LGD a little bit of a freebie there. Sometimes the creeps are not neutral. <laughs> that was dire creeps. Indeed. 
Well, 1K lead for PSG LGD as uh, Faith Beyond working on a BKB. And we've already seen the Spirit Vessel being applied. Very strong item. Zayat continuing on with the Vendetta. He is going to be seen. Why? He's going to take oh, the Vendetta sound. damage to start, but like you said, the Silence coming out. Hammer. Chrysalis wants to finish the job, and he will. They find the support. Making progress toward that Deso. He did go for the shard first. Uh, I think that's a good choice in this game as Dawn. You're up against too many problems that prevent you from using Starbreaker. So, and it feels bad to rush BKB. So, getting this as a as a kind of a gapping item for your damage item is is solid here. Um, still have to be very careful when you're out of Starbreaker though. I think this is the, once again a, a lineup that LGD are running that are very very good at punishing melee heroes. So. And we've seen that in the previous fight, right? If you're just a little bit out of position on the Dawn or on the Marcy, the punishment is pretty severe. So yeah. maybe Secret are going to try to slow this down until they have Resto's BKB. I think that would give them a lot of more options to play around with, because I think he's not going to die during that, realistically speaking, unless he's standing in like a Monkey King ult and just tanking that up. Nobody else is doing anything to him in BKB. Uh, I don't think the Exorcism Ghosts are really a concern when you have Sidekick plus your ult running. True. You're easily going to outheal that. Still a about a thousand away from finishing that, so a couple minutes at least. Uh, I mean, from LGD's side, they have a, a lineup that can take Roche pretty fast with the EXO, but it requires pretty big cooldown, and you will likely want to pick off beforehand. They're going to look for the said pick off. Wonder if they will try to get this as a level 12 gap for Faith Beyond to then go Roche. Tiny close to Dagger, by the way. ZQ went phase boots and has just been quietly farming in the top lane for the last smoke. Or five ways. PSG LGD, Avalanche clips Resolution, tossed back into the Sinister Gaze, but Nisha's coming in with the Solar Guardian help as well. Resolution ticking out very slowly. Looks like he will fall. No, actually gets off the stun just in time with his Unleash, dispels the Urn Charge, and Jin Q looks like he's going to fall as the Crystalist double kill comes out, but finally Resolution does fall. It's a little bit of a backwards engagement, but I think... Secret will be okay with this. Two for one. I wonder if we get that in a replay. I wonder if Zinkyu actually needed to go for that. Because what he did, he gave Resso something to hit with his lifesteal. Mm. Obviously, Unleash would not have been able to remove that Vessel Charge. It doesn't do that anymore unless you have, I believe it's the Shard, right? Where you get the dis Oh, the Helic. Um, so, or sorry, not the Shard, the, the Scepter. So, yeah. That uh, that got a lot better for Secret than it looked like it would. And again, that counter initiation potential with the Dawn really coming into play there to find a return. So we're going to see the replay here. So look, this is a really good initiation. Interesting Q into the silence. Just good execution overall. I think he ticks down to this vessel. But now Zinq is going to walk in and give him lifesteal. <laughs> and he will outlast this for so long. And the thing about this is, sure, Zinq just kill him in the end, right? But this means Tiny is not participating in the side fight, where that avalanche could have made a huge difference. The rest of all smiles. No, I'm not sure, but the toss, uh, I think it was bringing him closer, but the Sinister Gaze actually stopped him. Yeah, it stopped him mid air. Yeah. We're going to see a fight here, Faith Beyond. Doing a lot of damage, healing with the Spirit Siphon. Here comes the Wukong's command from Ame, trying to focus down Nisha. It's up the Bloodstone, but will oh, that be enough? Hit. Spirit Siphon's still there. That's two for nothing, PSG LGD winning this fight. And now another Avalanche GQ looking for a target to toss. Oh, Crystal's can't get to the low ground, though. Has to walk away the old-fashioned way. Gets off the Starbreaker. Nice really connects onto Ame. Silence to follow. But it looks like this is going to be the death of the position. One for Secret as PSG LGD win a big fight here in the mid-game. Huge for them. Monkey King unlocked. He gets involved with that BKB and finds the kill on the big... The big game on the other side. The Lash has the Bloodstone and Yules, but no BKB. And does just end up getting kind of... I wouldn't even say he got chain stunned, but just like a little bit here and there. It just builds up enough time for Ame to, to finish the job. In the end, with a frost shield slow, does really benefit Monkey King quite a lot for these chasing sequences. And now, all of a sudden, I mean, Secret just had a, a pretty good engage top where they get that trade. Now, 5k behind. Just look at that Wukong's command, beautifully placed. Nisha in a really awkward position in the center of it. Almost escaped, but not quite. And I feel like when the Leshrac dies, Secret's team fight just is over, right? Like, oh, yeah. it just falls so incredibly flat, not just because of the way their lineup is structured, but because of how much of the net worth they're sitting on is on this hero. He just really has to be protected at all costs to get his stuff out. And that time, Nisha does get picked off and just snowballs the fight in LGD's favor, no problem. Now Secret smoking up to the enemy jungle. Faith Beyond. They see him far out. Yep. 
I moved himself to the other side. Might have missed out on the vision there. No, they saw him. Resolution with a nice rebound. Here comes the Solar Guardian as well, but the Avalanche mitigating a lot of this right now. As Chrysalis focusing down Jin Q for the time being, as Faithion looks to be dead. Just one more right click to go. So nice pick off for Secret. Oh, they found but Monkey King. Kame, next to his tier two tower, has to pop the BKB. Wukong's command to follow. Now there's no physical damage to go through this with that BKB activated. But they can try to continue on here once the BKB ends up running out. Wise can take the brunt of the damage now from the Starbreaker. So Secret getting everything they want. Ame the only one left in this area. Looks like he does get away safely. That would have been just a disaster for PSG LGD. But still. Secret going to be extremely happy with what happened here. That looked like a really ambitious dive, but it works out very well. I don't think LGD were remotely ready for this to happen. Like the, the way their DP gets jumped, I think the just snap reaction there from ZQ on the tiny was really impressive. He finds the blink into a good avalanche, but did not buy enough space. No BKB yet on the DP. Couldn't get away from a lot of the damage and then gets run down by Resso. And they found, I believe they cut the trees of Ami as well. I think he took the long stun there. I believe we're going to see that potentially in the replay. So this is not a common attack angle here that Secret are going for with our lineup, right? <laughs> no, so thank you. Notice that really quick blink avalanche. Really good job there. Uh, but Faith Beyond, that's that Reso BKB coming into play. How much that can do. Does finish off that kill. And on the left side, yeah, Ami gets cut out of the trees there. Oh, Stunned for a really long time. Fortunately for him, has BKB ult, or he would have died too. And this could have been tragic for LGD. Now it's just... Now it's only bad. <laughs> Most of their lead evaporating there. Yeah, pretty damn even game now as a result of that fight. Have yet to see the first Roche, by the way. I think that's probably going to be the next thing on the menu for both sides if they can, if they can get to that. Okay. Faith Beyond, he is about to pick up his BKB. That is going to be pretty massive. That's huge. And it's worth noting as well what Ame went for. I don't think we've highlighted the Mage Slayer, but obviously an amazing uh, item against Lash, right? I think it's part of the reason that Ame doesn't die in that situation when he gets cut out of the trees. Having that magic resistance really helps, and obviously when you do hit the Lesh, getting that magic damage reduction as well. But that said, Nisha popping, or rather revealing a BKB in the coming fight could become massive for Secret here. From LGT, LGD in the pit. Exorcism already popped. Zayat is gonna spot it. The Spike Carapace comes out, double impale. Tiny's just dead right off the bat. And now the focus is on Ame. He goes down to the post, though, but no buyback for the Monkey King as wide. He's going to get chased now by Nisha in a huge fight for Secret. We'll see if they can go into the pit and get this Roche, but the toss back from Jin Q. Avalanche is there as well. Resolution gets deleted, so maybe not with the numbers. Buyback now onto the Lich. Puppy, attempting to TP out. He'll be fine. Pretty damn impressive that LGD managed to salvage that. Like, yeah. consider how that fight began. They send in the four Nyx, they immediately kill the enemy carry as well as the Lich, and it still turns out somewhat even in the end. It is big, though, that the Exorcism was expended and the BKB for Faith Beyond. Of course, that's a, a really crucial moment there that LGD could have converted into something big, but I guess at the very least for them with how that started, things could have gone way worse. So look inside. I mean, also kind of a blunder. Where's the Sentry? Right? That's true. You're playing yeah, against true. Nyx and you're taking Roche. This is, I would say for LGD, maybe a little bit disappointing considering the level this team usually plays at. Just a little bit cocky, really, going for that without putting a Sentry Ward down in that area to protect them from this potential move. And I think it got placed now, so they do have it for the next Roche fight. It is ready against Zayas, but that definitely did catch them off guard there. Like, imagine that exact situation with the Sentry. I actually think they just get the Roche. Yeah, we got another toss back. This time it's on the Puppy. It's going to be canceled a bit here. That's the Starbreaker, so it's a one-for-one one on the supports. I mean, Exo's still down for a minute. Not sure if Secret will have time to try to take advantage, as we can see a blink now onto Nisha. That's a dieback on GQ, by the way. That's true, a full minute. Secret are getting insane value out of Zayas on the Nyx, just like in the first game. I think it's really the Carapace is, is causing issues. You see the Tiny there wanting to go in and just gets counter, countered very quickly. Zayas in the right place at the right time a lot in these games. And resolution, I believe the Basher is on the way, so That's huge. he will do a lot of damage. In it, gives him, it gives him the possibility of preventing Monkey King from playing the game, right? Oh, wow. If, if, you, if you do get the right setup without uh, Wukong's command down. Marcy can beat Monkey. Fight straight up. This is huge for Secret, though. Don't think... I mean, do LGD even Exo try this? is up in five. It's Faith too late. Leon, yeah, looks this like it's too late. Awesome play call here from Secret to go for this. They know Tiny has no buyback. Oh, oh they're trying to jump Faith Beyond! 
Frost Shield's gonna keep him healthy for a little longer. Pops the BKB. Do they oh, have the physical damage stop. to go through? But Monkey King with the balance strike. Ame comes to play. Bash applied to resolution now, but the rebound onto the other side of the river. He'll be fine, but Nisha looks like he wants to try to fight. Gets off the Yule's Fifty on now on the outskirts of this fight. That is a dead lash, but that is just the Aegis. Exorcism still going. Zayats gets the impale onto one. But now they're trying to turn this around onto the Monkey King. There's the Starbreaker from Chrysalis, and that is the death of Ame. 50 seconds on the deck. And PSG LGD, they get the Aegis technically out of the hands of Secret, but it does cost them. Yeah, it's, it's almost a repeat of the previous moment, right? Where a bad start gets turned into something salvageable for LGD. Like, it, it's not great by any means to lose the Roche there, but as you said, they do get rid of the Aegis. And, I mean, not a spell we hype up a lot in general, but Frost Shield just coming up yeah. huge in this fight for keeping Faith Beyond alive here as he does get jumped there. So you see the instant Frost Shield here <laughs> makes the difference. If he dies there, this is just all over. Gets the BKB off, gets the Siphons running. Awesome three-man stun coming in from Ame from the tree line there with that Boundless. And Resso, <laughs> fortunate enough to have a good spell to get out Every with. time I saw, we're gonna see the Avatars come out onto Puppy. Is it gonna be punished though? Crystals comes in with the hammer. Starbreaker's there as well, and Jinkyu dies. 45 seconds of no Tony. And Y. Gonna be oh. spotted out, the Glimpse back. And it looks like Y will be next. So two supports down in favor of Secret. Yep. Basher on both sides. You pointed out the Dawn, uh, the Marcy one, now we have one on the Monkey King as well. So, really crucial item for potentially locking down the Lesh or the Marcy to keep them in that arena. As we've seen, Resso just resets a lot of the time, just jumps away on the Nyx most of the time. And maybe with this Basher, Ame can keep them a little bit more in place. Eyeing up a Scotty next for more healing reduction against the Lash and, you know, that reliable slow to once again oh, stick. Nothing to say, and Pale is there. The stun from Resolution with the Basher as well. Nothing to say, has to use BKB. But the Glimpse back, they're gonna find the support. No, Faith Beyond pops the BKB as well. But this is both in defensive measures as Resolution finds the distance because he's playing Marcy. And down goes, nothing to say. 3K lead now for Secret. And Nisha. Working on the Shivas next. Is it going to get outpost control in the PSG LGD jungle? Yeah, Ame, looking for the support. But Zayats is there to try to counteract this. Solar Guardian coming in as well. Ame pops the BKB along with Chrysalis. But Starbreaker deletes Y from the face of the map. And now they're inside Wukong's command. No bash. Have to get the hell out of there as Resolution. Looks like he's going to live. Uses the rebound to get a little bit extra distance. Zayat and company now focusing down. Faith Beyond on the Death Prophet. Another valuable kill and another valuable fight for Secret. Yeah, they're going to turn this into mid-tier 2 as well. So, yeah, huge that they managed to fight the fight with Zeus dead, right? It's just, uh, it's a lot easier for Secret to take this fight when they just get the initiation and don't have to worry too much about that counterplay. So, this looks pretty good, but it does. They just have so quick reactions on the Dawn and the Nyx. Again, this pairing that Secret have been running in Game 1 and, and Game 2 now is really paying off and crucial for Wrestle that he doesn't get bashed. Any bash in that Monkey King arena, he's dead. So a little bit of luck on his side as well there to get out. And all of a sudden, man, this game has swung around in a big way. I feel like it's five minutes ago that LGD were ahead by 5K, and now they're down by eight. It goes fast sometimes in Dota when you win these big fights and Secret. Probably with this advantage that they have right now, if they can keep their cool and keep building up their Lesh, the next row, she would imagine, could go their way and that one could open up for high ground. But like you pointed out in the last game, LGD is a team that plays really, really well from behind. One of the best in the world at that. And they will try just that immediately now. No DP ults. They're actually going for a five-man offensive smoke with Faith Beyond the best ability. I mean, it's debatable. Maybe Spirit Siphon is his best ability, but, you know. <laughs> True. Uh, Puppy. If they want him, he's yeah. dead. They do. Okay, Avatar. Zayas wants to come in, though. They've lost Puppy already. Does have the buyback available. His Thunder God's Wrath is there. Looks like Zayas is going to barely limp away, but no, nothing to say there to finish him off. Now, Resolution, he's taking so much damage. The rebound onto the other side of the map again. Rezo is fine. 70 seconds of no Nyx. Must have been a dieback, technically. Uh, Puppy. Puppy. Static Storm, okay, enough to take out Jin Q. Very cocky play from Puppy, but it kind of works out. But again, if they get the kill, this will technically be a dieback for him. Boundless Strike, and it looks like it will be just that. But there, there's no Roche to get. There's that Glimpse buff. That's not a kill without the damage. That is a good point. He killed Tiny with, uh, with Glimpse there, so. 
Yeah, it, it's not great uh, to get a dieback just to kill off Jin Q. I mean, his, his net worth in this game is not particularly impressive on that tiny. He has had a lot of deaths in these fights, two and eight currently on him. And it gives more than anything for LGD. They made a smoke without EXO. They finally win a fight, and they get a little bit of breathing room, which I think is is crucial. You're closing in on some pretty big moments. Monkey King is not too far from level 20. Faith Beyond is close to level 18 as well. Nothing to say also not that far from 20. And you look over at the secret heroes. Nisha, obviously, with level 22, well ahead in that on that front, having that strong talent on 20. And Resto actually breaks his 18 now as well, so... Important to look out for these these key levels coming both sides. Wait, I believe Nisha is level 17. What the hell? Remember his start? Yes, that's level okay. two at like seven and a half yeah, minutes. That's a good recovery. Oh, it gets oh, the carapace. Very good initiation, but Jinkyu is there with the avalanche. Will it be enough? No, nothing to say. It goes down to another member of Secret. That Starbreaker has been deleting heroes, and of course you've said it time and time again. Zayat has been setting up every single initiation. And the fact that they can do it across the map with a hero like Dawnbreaker is insane. It's just a great read that he thinks Zeus is going to go there and use Heart Lightning, right? So he could get that Carapace stun off, and then they use that immediately to chain. Just very, very nicely played by Secret. Pretty much perfect layering of the stuns, too. Just a little bit of a mistake there. Maybe you get BKB off and jump away on the Zeus, but none of that out of the way of Secret, so... Yeah, Dave. Dave really had his number this game. I mean, it's not like it's a, an awful scoreline to be 9, 5, and 8 on Zeus, but it just feels like the, the Carapace has been his big bane this game. Yeah, so many times getting caught off by this this Nyx that he did choose to pick it into, which is worth pointing out. Like they picked Zeus knowing that Nyx was in the game, and it is a double-edged matchup, right? Zeus also has the, obviously, the true sight coming out from Lightning Bolt can be handy and the ult yeah. to find the Nyx, but he makes the first move. And that hasn't really come into play. I think I've not seen really. one, one time that it's actually come into yeah. play. This game. Zayas has been playing an outstanding series. Absolutely. So this is one of the greatest Nyx performances I've seen in a long time. This hero was kind of just not in play from, I want to say, like previous TIs. It feels like it's just fallen off the map, but this year it's kind of come back with a vengeance. Yep. As Nisha now has his Shivas and his net worth separation between one and two is absurd. 7k, my goodness. Yep. He's not afraid to go to the high ground as the rest of Secret are going to smoke up. LGD would love to not fight for the next 300 gold on Ami. Just get that Scotty. It's a really big game changer for them to get that unlocking. It's going to help them so much against the Lash as long as he gets to play the fight on the MK. Look how much they're covering him. It's like. Resolution with the double damage, oh, by the way. Nothing to say is dead. And they're stunned onto several heroes now. Two dead for LGD to just start out the fight. Another Starbreaker, but now Crystals and company outside the Wukong's command. The glimpse back onto Faith Beyond. And he is dead. Triple kill for Resolution. There are all buybacks available for LGD, so she's going to have to be a bit careful with this. And why? He's going to die inside his own base. He is the one lone member of LGD without the buyback at the moment. So 12k lead for Secret, Roche is available, and we'll see if they try to go for that before trying to push high ground. Correct me wrong, did, did, did they set up that fight with a Reso jump? Was the, he just, he I just think jumped his, on the Zeus, right? His rebound, oh, I don't know about the initial one. I think he blinked with ult on and just instantly bashed the Zeus and basically killed him 100 to 0 with a DD. I think that's what happened, right? I was like, okay, he just disappeared on the Zeus, he has no armor. Actually, he has negative armor because he has the nether shawl. <laughs> That's true. We're going to see the replay. Oh, okay, oh. this is the tail end of it. I, I believe it was Resto setting it up himself that time, but either way, just it, it's extremely explosive, the secret lineup, when they get the jump. You have to be so quick as LGD to counteract it with Glimmer Cape, with Frost Shield, or the hero just disappears. Yeah. One of Marcy's biggest strengths in Pro Dota is that the damage comes out so quickly that it's almost inhuman to react to it in key moments. Right there, the Zeus just didn't get to play. Nothing to say. I, part of me feels like he should buy Aeon Disc here. I, I think going Oct Octarine is maybe... Like, it's, it's a glass half full kind of, or glass half empty kind of approach. Like, how are you thinking about this? Is it, okay, I'm not going to get caught and I will have maximum impact? Or is it, all right, I kind of have to cover my bases? It doesn't feel good to buy BKB and Disc, but I mean, look at how the fights are going, right? I think technically, if you think you're yeah. going to survive, that's considered glass half full. Yeah. But <laughs> that's not really what's happening. Uh, <laughs> so I think that's what I'm saying. The Octarine is a glass half full approach, but that's okay. not what's been happening, right? So I think you have to... Oh, uh, why? Out. Out. No, he 
these toes. They're gonna oh. see him on leash and a couple right clicks from resolution. Okay. Will do the job. He has a chrysalis right now, uh, not his teammate. Uh, and he's actually pretty well into the Daedalus, so I think just a recipe away essentially from finishing that. Obviously, buyback is going to be kind of paramount for every secret or every hero in this game at this stage. 17k lead now for secret. Aegis advantage. We didn't talk about the shard, but it was taken by Nisha, which one of those weird shards, obviously very powerful, the Skodos being, I mean, a lot of time we think about like high ground defense, but when you're going high ground yourself, it's actually not too shabby as well. Avalanche here, Wukong's command expended. Is it just for Puppy, though? Looks like it is for now as Nisha, and he's perfectly fine to try to fight this out on the other side of the Wukong's command. Here comes a Solar Guardian as well. Faith Beyond is dead. But the toss back onto Nisha, but now the Wukong's command is down. The BKB finally activate for Ami. He gets a big battle of strike. A lot of damage coming out from Nothing to Say. So they get the two supports in the end, but now Nothing to Say, he's the one getting pursued by Nisha. Split Earth connects. Post Nova continue to go in again. The Age is still intact for Secret. Frost Shield not going to mitigate any of that magic damage, and the Starbreaker is enough. Another death for nothing to say, and two cores dead for LGD with no buybacks. Yeah, he actually finally got to play a fight on the Zeus, so we got to see something come out of him in, in the way of damage there. But again, Secret just pouncing so strongly in these fights. Now, and that one felt like a net worth lead win, yes. right? It, if, that, if they don't have a big advantage here, this fight is going to go LGD's way, but Secret have built themselves such a, a fundamental lead now that they, they can even make a couple of mistakes here or there if necessary, but uh, they're not really doing that. <laughs> Still feels very, very clean. I, I love the confidence from Nisha too. I mean, sure he has Aegis. I think he would have done that anyway, honestly. He's like, oh, Wukong's command is down and I'm not in it? I'm invincible. I can do whatever I want. And he just runs outside it and starts chasing heroes down. Now looking for the first lane of barracks here. Overwhelming Blink obviously will make it very easy for him to, first of all, be tanky and also set up his own stun. And Nisha, not. I mean, he is level 25. Toss back. Toss back. That's something you have to be a little bit careful when he pops a BKB. And Jin Q is punished really hard. So this is going to not connect thanks to BKB from Faith Beyond. That's the buyback now to Jin Q. That'd be careful because nothing to say is now available to fight. They're going to try to turn this around as Resolution jumps in with his BKB, focusing down Ame. But the Wukong's command can give him so much armor as Resolution gets destroyed. 80 seconds of no mercy. Another okay. pause for Secret as PSG LGD showing some life here. They find three kills with no reciprocation. Toss MVP. What is their abraser doing down there? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe someone's going to... Oh, oh all right. Jin Q deletes it. Very nice. Would have been funny if they gave someone buyback, but not the case. Uh, yeah. Toss is everything there. They can't They can't get Nisha into a bad position in any other way. And you saw... He was expecting the play, too. He was like, I'm going to get tossed here. I'm going to BKB. I'm going to kill Tiny, which is what they did. But it set up enough time for LGD to connect and... Maybe his teammate's a little bit too eager to help here. I think he's actually fine. Yeah, he's definitely And he can reset out of this. That with Resso getting that kill on the Tiny Secret can full disengage here, but they kind of do get baited in again. I think this jump from Resso is really putting him in an awkward spot where Monkey King can finally isolate him. And there's a bash, and that's the kill. Yeah, and using the rebound offensively means you have no escape mechanism. Exactly. I, I think Secret could have actually got a pretty big win there by just Disengage Trade. once the exit was popped. Yeah, trading their ages away for the tiny buyback and then, then getting out. So LGD winning a very important fight, and the Aegis was never used, so it's going to expire on its own accord here in 20 seconds. Question is, what is the next item for Nisha? He has the overwhelming blink. Wind Waker queued up. Okay. Um, I guess it's really nice to save his teammates out of Wukongs, right? He can get the he can get Rezo out of trouble. He's probably the primary hero that will be in jeopardized positions. Um, Hex is also something he is looking at. I mean, the problem with using on a teammate, you can't move it, right? It only moves on yourself. So you can't really get out of Wukong, so it's just literally it, a it just, it just It's just bu buying time is just, just important. Just an extra couple seconds. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes a pretty big difference, but... Nisha is still with a ridiculous net worth lead right now. Uh, but at what point, is there a point that Lesh falls off at all? Because... <laughs> I mean, um, the Diabolic Edict explosion, we didn't really talk about the 25 town. That is something you just can't let him get close to buildings. I mean, I, I guess something Nisha doesn't have is a refresher. If you want to look at it from that perspective, like, how do you solve the hero? If he doesn't have Aegis and doesn't have refresher, he is susceptible when BKB runs out. Zeus has a lot of damage. You have no magic resistance. 
Uh, I guess that's kind of untrue. You have Cloak of Flame, so a little bit, but it's not that much. Uh, and if you get caught by a Scotty trail Speaking from Monkey... of Refresher, Ame yeah. does have one. Has it? Yep. And they are smoked up. Even after the nerfs, you can easily afford this if you go Scotty. It's something, especially we've seen Faceless Voids in the past go for as a build-up to Refresher. Oh, oh he's going to be the one that gets popped here, but pops the BKB very early. Gets off the Slurra, trying to play around it, but the Jingle's about to proc here as well. The command is there, and Nisha has to use the Yule on himself. But he's likely just going to be left alone, and he's going to be brought down. A huge kill for LGD. There are buybacks for both main members here from Secret. You really have to be on your toes against this team. Like, you have a big lead, sure, but this is the one thing that can't happen for Secret, is that they find Lesh without support. Like, if anyone else is in that line of fire, it's not that bad. Like, you could have lost a Nyx there, you could have lost a Marcy, you could have lost a Disruptor, but... Nisha cannot get out once he gets slowed down by that Scotty. He has no... I think that's probably why he is considering this Wind Breaker, is he needs it for himself. He has to have some sort of way of repositioning and buying time and getting out. That's fair. And with the BKB expended, you see it afterwards, he's just getting chain locked until he dies. Protection just wasn't there. That's a, a big dent in Secret's lead. That was about 6k net worth from two kills in a tower. Mm -hmm. So... It is still well within reach for LGD to Absolutely. solve this. I mean, 11k at this stage is really not that... I mean, it's literally on Nisha, right? Yeah, that's that is pretty much his net worth lead, so yeah, uh, that's true. One thing I do want to mention, we're a bit far, it's 2k away, but Puppy, Aghanim Scepter, halfway there, that is something that can just win the game, essentially. Yeah, he, he has some good setup, up. right? He has the Nyx. Oh, speaking of. Yeah, Solar Guardians there. Looks like Jin Q will die. 90 here. seconds of no tiny here. Never safe pushing a side lane against these two. And a quick TP's out. Ame not going to pursue any further. They're immediately going again. It's like, oh, we get the kill, they TP back, now they smoke and look for another move. So, quick plays here from Team Secret. Lesh obviously will be able to connect here with Travels if they find a move on the side lane here, bot, but nobody is showing. From LGD wisely, staying tight knit here. It is historically and just generally the way to handle Nyx is to not split up too much, especially if he has a global presence, right? A classic combination is Nyx and Boker. You get the stun combo into Sunstrike, and that's kills. If you play tight like this with Sentry Wards, it's a lot harder for Zayas <laughs> to find the impact. Uh, very synced up on those Shivas there. Faith Beyond versus Nisha, but the BKB prevents the glimpse from being used. Oh, uh, Reso's thinking. Oh, he's going. He gets the bash to start oh. things out, and Faith Beyond is evaporated here, and now they're going to get the Lich on top of it. Has to buy back. And we can see that Roche is available. I'm not sure if they're aware. And this is the one with the Aghanim Scepter, which gives you that 6k net worth injection, essentially. Dude, that's so dirty. Like, think of how tanky the death prop is. 4k health with a Shiva. You, you have to get Eon disc. Reso literally just blinked in and killed him in two seconds. Yeah. Daedalus, Unleash. And I think when the Tiny is dead, that is their combo breaker. Right? That's the thing that's been kind of... Yeah. Like the Avalanche or the Tossback that get the fear. When he's dead, I don't think there's anything they need to fear when going in. And this is going to be another Roche for Secret. And this is going to be Nihilism, I would assume, onto Nisha. We'll see who ends up uh, taking the, the Agony Scepter. Holding it on oh, Nyx, okay. Right now. He's not used it, though. Puppy's 800 from finishing it the old fashioned way. Yeah, not I, consumed it. I mean, I guess they're debating what to do, right? Yeah, I, it's actually a tough decision. Nyx's Ag is incredibly good. The question is, how much value are you going to get on Nihilism? I mean, it's, it's really good as well. Yeah, it's not the best Nihilism game, though, right? It, it's it's good against Monkey King, but... Mm, I don't know. Maybe they're just never going to use it. I wonder what the win rate is of Aghanim's Blessing Unconsumed. <laughs> it's got to be pretty it's high. It's that, yeah, I'm sure. I think. The, get somebody working on that one. Uh, he's, he's literally... It is inflating his net worth right now. So he's literally just r walking around with higher net worth, no, no, no game. It doesn't inflate until you consume it. It, okay, he just consumed it. It did. His net worth was the same. There's no way. Yeah. I refuse to believe He it. was carrying around 6k gold. All right, he finally uses it. All right, so now you get uh, a buff to every skill and burrow. You become a lurker. Uh, hopefully that's not trademark or I might get fired here. So, secret PSG LG 25k lead for secret, but it doesn't... Sometimes it hasn't really felt like that based on LGD just making brilliant moves. But that last one really hurt. It did, and they hit a huge breaking point here. They get 25 on Dawnbreaker. This is such an incredible... It is one of the best talents in the whole game, in my opinion. Just so strong to get a second free Starbreaker. You have the BKB death, so you're guaranteed to get two of them off. You're playing against one Monkey King Basher. It's the only counter that the enemy team has to your Starbreakers going off, so... 
Chrysalis will do massive damage, and as we've seen time and time again in this game, plenty of setup where that comes from his teammates, both Rezo and Zayats will be happy to just jump in and, and give him two Star Breakers to get a key kill. And not only that, uh, I mean, the other side, we have Heart on Faith Beyond, very big item, but the Agon Scepter was officially purchased now by Puppy, so you know what muting about don't have? They don't have a Force stat. And on PSG? Yeah, that feels like an oversight to not have that item, right? I know you're playing against Glimpse, but you need some sort of way of getting out of Starbreaker, of getting out of... Oh, oh, and oh. and they're gonna jump in, Solo Guardian coming in at the end, it looks like Fethia might drop inside the Wukong's command, and they're gonna just right, try to reset. And Zayas Zayas and is gonna live thanks to the Eon Disc and just burrow his way back to full HP. The Jin Q is dead as well without buyback available. Now they just wait out the Wukong's. Oh, he got the oh, stun again! Go in again with Chrysalis' Starbreaker, decimating time and time again. But there's Ame's Refresher, Wukong's command to follow. Chrysalis eats the cheese, tries to get four staff, but not gonna live through this engagement. They did find Niche, okay. Gets off the Yule, but instantly canceled. Dude, that was a neutral item. It's actually doing work. But they got the tower, but nothing more. And, and they got Nisha. a Zeus buyback too. All right, he has Wind Waker, like you said. That was the Stormcraft, so he has two ways to dispel. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I thought that was like a nullifier or something, just canceling it out, but just the baby Yules. And Secret continuing to pursue. Fortification is popped, and Split Earths aplenty being applied. And now they know that there's no Wukong's command. Refresher already used on Ame. Did he also pop BKB? No. So he has his second BKB now. This is just not a safe push whatsoever with DP and especially Tiny respawning. I, I really like from Secret that they disengage here and don't try to get those barracks. I think the risk reward just isn't favoring you nearly enough. Go back, play the map, get your spells ready, get your heroes back in play and try to find another pick outside the base and use that to get the racks instead. So, yeah. I mean, LGD, they do hold on, but it feels like it's expensive every single time. This time, getting that Zeus buyback out, he doesn't have disc, and he's still not considering it. He's eyeing up the Hex. Okay, finally, he changed his mind. So will take the defensive route here to ensure that he can at least stay alive for a moment. Faith Beyond! Uh-oh. Inside the Static Storm. Remember, he can't use any items inside of it, and he's dead! 90 seconds of no death profit. Ame trying to get some revenge, but Resolution ends up using Rebound on the other side. Only one inside Wukong's command right now, but three dead for PSG LGD. And now Ame looks to be next. The Starbreaker is coming just for him. Specialty from Secret. He has to buy back instantly. Now Resolution with the Dispose, onto nothing to say, has to pop the BKB himself, but this looks like it might be the beginning of the end for LGD in this upper bracket. Rebound not proc there, but again, Chrysalis with the Starbreaker. And this is gonna be several sets of racks, if not potentially GG. And Faith Beyond just disappears. It's like LGD want to access this high ground. They're like, what hero can we send in first that can possibly survive? And he should be the choice, right? You've got heart. you have heart, Shiva, BKB. He dies before he gets BKB off. He literally just gets killed 100 to 0. Even with Lich's protection, it wasn't enough. Oh, Zayax finds Ame. This is gonna be a dieback for him potentially. matchup in the upper bracket but wow what a series from secret yeah my prediction so far great zero out of two in the bracket so that's uh yeah what a i mean i